this story, the plants, um, the pollination system that of her ohelio plant was missing um, a part. Which part from our pollination system was missing from the ohelio plant? The insect was missing from the plant. So what did she do? How did she solve the problem? How was she going to solve the problem? She was going to pollinate. She was going to. She decided she could pollinate the flowers, right? How was she going to pollinate that flower? How was? What was she going to use? Right, she did. She used a ball and a stick. Looked like that in the picture, didn't it? What do you remember? Anybody? Does anybody remember what it was called? Nooch. <coughs> A hand pollinator, you're right, a hand pollinator. Today you're going to be careful observers, just like Mariana, Mariana, and you're also going to be just like an agricultural engineer. You're going to be studying some plants, thinking about a hand pollinator, just like she did. Today you're going to, you're going to look at some different kinds of materials and to see how much pollen your material can pick up. Why would that be important, Owen? Because if it doesn't pick up pollen, uh, uh, the, the the flowers wouldn't grow. Uh, the the uh, plants. And the flowers won't grow, start to grow in the plant. You're right. So I'm thinking it, if it picks it up, that's a good thing. What else does it need to do? Do you think? Besides picking it up, it also needs to do something else. What do you think, Marinette? Let it go. It needs to let it go. So does anybody have any ideas about what we could do? To test some materials, yeah. Um, a, a cotton ball, but then rip it. A so cotton ball. My Mar marionette said a straw. A uh, a uh, straw and a, a pom pom. A pom pom would work. Why do you think a cotton ball and a pom pom may work the best? Well, they're they're more soft. Soft. Much softer. They're softer now. Why? And you think that the straw will work because you can. You can blow it out once you get it. Okay. I'm thinking that you are already thinking about some questions like Mar like Mariana did. She was thinking about the properties of the materials that she would use. Well, properties would be um, its shape, its size, its texture, how it feels. And I'm going to give you a bag of materials. And you know what? To help you with thinking about these, I'm going to give you some questions to think about at your table. As they ask questions, is it heavy or is it light? Is your material heavy or light? Would that be a property? Yes. What color is it? Is that a property? What shape is it? Is it not another property? Its material, is it the material rough or smooth? Is the material clear or opaque? Can't see through it. Right, you can see through it just a little bit. Is it stiff or flexible? Is it hard or soft? Is it fluffy? Is it sticky? Hmm. Okay, I want you to be thinking about all the types of materials, the properties of these materials. Okay? I wonder what to get the problem with. I really? Not this. What's supposed to be I'm not. I'm. 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 It won't bounce, but it rolls, right? Oh, that please. All right, so let's look at the tape. Where's your scotch tape? I have it. Oh, okay. Let's take a piece off. Let you feel it and tell me what you think. Let you feel it and tell me what you think. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Sticky on the bottom, smooth on the top. Okay, so maybe you can write that. What's the surface feel like? What's the texture? Is it soft? Is it fluffy? It's fluffy and flexible. I love it. Good job. How about the pom pom balls? The same? Yeah. Good job. Okay, pipe cleaner. That's what Mike has in his hand. That's this piece right here. How would you describe that? How would you tell me about its properties? What can it do? What are you doing with it? It's flexible. It sure is.
I need you to help me. I have a chart and I wanted to know the properties that you think will be, you, you can do, use to describe your materials that you had in your bag. So I put up marble. I know my marble looks a little different than yours. It's a flat one, so I could put it on the paper. But it's still a marble, okay? So let's just ask somebody to volunteer. Can someone tell me what the property of your marble was? Um, it's a little bit heavy. Heavy? Yes. Yep. Alasia? It's hard. It's hard. Let's look at, think about the tape, the scotch tape. What kind of properties would you say the scotch tape have, it's, Michael? It's sticky. It is sticky. I'm going to write sticky. Another one? Nooch. Flexible. It's flexible. What do you mean by that, flexible? What does that word mean? Like it can move around. It can move around. Good. I like how you define that. Oh. It's like it can go together, like if it's straight, it can like go together. So you can, it's flexible, so you can shape it. How about pom-pom? They are. Fluffy. Fluffy. Yep, Alicia? Soft. Soft. Okay, let's go on to the pipe cleaner. Jason, what did you tell me about that pipe cleaner? Yeah, it's flexible and it can like go through each other. Like if it's straight, then like one side can touch the other side. So you can shape it? Mm hmm It's flexible and you can shape it. I want you talking to your partner and I want you to circle the, the materials that you think would be good choices for a hand pollinator. I would like you to tell me, I would like you to tell me which materials you think would make really, probably good hand pollinators, the materials that you would use if you were going to make a hand pollinator from these materials. Which ones would work? And cotton ball. And cotton ball. Here's your second job. Ready? I would like you to cross out the ones that you think are not going to be good materials for a hand pollinator. We're thinking about the question that says, what materials and properties of the materials works best for picking up and dropping off pollen? Just like the insect did. She picks up and she drops off and she doesn't stay there very long, does she? No, she just goes very quickly, picks it up, drops it off. Of all of our material list, which ones do you think would work the best? JR. Um, the pom pom. The pom pom. Can you tell me why? Because the pom poms can pick up lots of stuff, wet like water, water and wet stuff that. If you can pick up stuff that's it's the same thing that's like the same pattern, like fluffy and fluffy. So it could pick up things that are fluffy. Okay, good thinking. And do you think it will also drop off quickly too? Good job. Okay. How many people think the pom-pom is a good choice? How many people thought the pom-pom was a good choice? Sum up. Good job. All right. Anybody else have another good suggestion? Michael? Um, the um, pipe cleaner. The pipe cleaner might work. Yeah, Why do you think, Mike? Um, flexible. You can like flex it um, different ways. Mm -hmm. To get pollen off and on. Oh, good. Good thinking. I like how you're thinking. Anybody else have any other suggestions for materials? Cole? Marble. A marble. Do you think that's a good choice or a bad choice? Bad choice. A bad choice. Why? Because it's because if you try to carry pollen, it will fall right off. How many people don't think that the hand the hand pollinator with a marble would work? Put your thumb on your chin if you don't think that would work. Yeah, um, I, I, so I think I agree with you. How about you, Jacob? Do you have an idea? Um, I know it's used for the tape, so you can tape the 
the cotton ball on the pipe cleaner. Oh, so you're thinking about, already you yeah, think you're imagining? Yeah, and then you can take the foil on the cotton ball to scoop it up. Good job. All right. Well, friends, you can, you did a great job. So we're thinking that maybe this and this and this may work the best. Maybe even the foil may work the best. But some of these materials probably aren't going to be very useful for our project, right? So you just uh, did some really good thinking about the properties of materials and which would be good choices, just like Mariana had to do in her story. Um, I think it's great for kids to have hands-on um, understanding of what the materials are that they're actually going to be able to use and to make some really good decisions about them by not giving them um, the opportunity to really talk as a group or talk to each other. Let them use the materials in the bags just as the unit does, but it's nice to have the, the materials themselves on a chart so that the, each of the children can um, then record their answers and come up with different understandings. But to get them, to give them their own individual bags where they can feel the materials, play with the materials, and think about it is really good and to help them come up with some good um, vocabulary for the understanding of the properties. Inside the, in one of the unit pages for the, for the teachers, um, there's a list of uh, properties, questions to ask about properties, and that's very helpful for children, especially with language delays or language deficits. It's nice for them to be able to have some understanding of which words they can choose if they're having trouble thinking of words, and it helps them to think of other words that are synonyms or um, related to those properties. I think they understand the, co the concept of properties better at the end of the year, um, and those questions certainly help them thinking about what it is that they need to focus on the question um, versus, you know, coming up with silly words or words that they're not quite understanding what you're asking them about. What, what is materials? What is properties? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think it's a clearer understanding as you go through all units. Mm -hmm.